hello again. My name is Yevgen. I am front-end engineer and work uh, mostly or currently only with React, but today's topic will not be related neither to specific programming language nor to framework. We are going to talk about some algorithmic stuff. I assure you that it will be uh, pretty useful for people who work with UI because uh, thing I'm going to talk about is calendars. And definitely it's not the part of every project, but most of, uh, well, okay, not most, but I, I saw it in many projects on both UI and backend side. And uh, when I was working on one healthcare project and we had the uh, a feature to, to schedule appointment for a patient, we had hard times. Uh, why, why it's so hard, at least why it sounds so, so hard? Because first of all, uh, we have a lot of data already, like existing appointments, uh, some doctor puts block uh, for some time, they unavailable. Also different challenge uh, when we need to at least for our project, it was actual. We needed to schedule um, recurrent appointments like every second Tuesday on so or something. Uh, another challenge would be if we need to schedule several appointments of different types and different lengths, say preparation for surgery, then some surgery action, then some something related to recovery and all of that required us to provide to calculate available ranges and to provide user to choose from them and let's uh, let's take this example uh, assume these blue areas are availability parts like uh, time slots when we can put say uh, one hour appointment or two hour appointment okay so if we are talking about two hour appointment, we can check it with our eyes and see that this uh, first one and second one just not are not enough. They are just one hour and a half and we can put two hour appointment only in third slot, but it's with eyes. How to do that with calculation stuff? Back in our project, when we uh, joined it, like we yeah, are, I mean, software team joined it, this project, they did it in uh, like pretty simple way. Uh, they were iterating over each 15, uh, each slot with 15, uh, 15 step, 15 minute step. Like they are checking if uh, some appointment can be started from 7.00, then from 7 and 15, then 7 and half, then et cetera, et cetera. It was really long period of time it took a really long time it was complex to implement it also ran into issues with more complex tasks especially when we have uh, multiple doctors available for the same procedure or if we needed to in implement or to schedule series of different appointment of different types this is just a background to make more drama and uh, before I'm switching to real stuff with these time ranges, let's talk about braces uh, because it's in, the, it's in the title and actually it's really helpful here, I assure you. Uh, just stay with me for a moment. So uh, on the lead code and code wars and other platforms like that, it's one of the, uh, I believe, beginner level task, but it's not that easy uh, when you face it for the first time. And what's, what is what is it all about? Uh, suppose we have a string uh, which contains just a braces, opening and closing in random ordering. And <clears throat> our task is to check if a uh, string is balanced. So first of all, and most of all, uh, count of opening and closing braces are equal, but also that ordering matters just like in our normal language normal human language we should not open uh extra time or we should not put closing braces before related opening one so how it's implemented how could we implement it to calculate this correctness 
let's start this example. This is definitely a correct example of a uh, correct stream. This is definitely an example of incorrect stream. But once we are getting more uh, longer streams, we are just getting in trouble. Uh, so let's let's calculate. Let's pick our computer do some stuff for us. And my idea behind algorithm for calculating is just to instead of operating on stream, we will implement uh, in we are will be operating on numbers positive and negative. And if we replace all the opening braces with positive one and closing braces with negative one, we just can go one by one and sum that they up. And uh, in perfectly balanced or correctly balanced stream, we should not go below zero, first rule. And second rule, at the end of the stream, we should get zero again, like starting from zero and ending with zero. In this particular case, we are going and reaching negative value, which means that we actually have extra extra closing brace. And this is actually a basic algorithm which can be implemented in any language and will help you pass at least this uh, sample from lead code or code of ours. But how it works for our time ranges and calendar? Uh, first operation I want to, to highlight or to talk about is not directly related to braces, but also is really important. Say we have a calendar with availability zones and uh, we need to we need to fit to our appointment here. How we could go with calculating, not with just looking with our eyes, but with calculating thing. Uh, in our code, we will have three ranges with start and end time, like the first range from 8 to 9.30 and so on. And first step uh, to, to figure out where we could fit our appointment is to shrink every range by the length of desired event we are, we are trying to fit in. So let's shrink every of them to, to, uh, to hours by moving their end edges. As you see, first disappears because it was just an hour and a half, so it was not sufficient for us. Second becomes smaller, but still uh, has one hour and a half in the length. And third one, actually, it collapsed to the line, but uh, I assume that tiny line wouldn't be really obvious to see on the slide. So uh, we can see just from label that it's just just a tiny line. And with this kind of magic, uh, kind of tr trick, we are switching from thinking about placing rectangular events with start and end time inside of rectangular avail available area. We are switching to concept of, of setting just start time. So now we have uh, after this calculation, which definitely would be would uh, go just with numbers in our code, not with uh, visual rectangulars. But after this uh, transformation, we are ready to slice it in any way. So everywhere we, we can put start point of our one hour appointment and it will be valid. Say we can slice it with a step of uh, 30 minutes or 15 minutes or five minutes and propose and user to choose from them. Like you have five uh, options to start to our appointment. Or you have even more if we slice it with a smaller step. This is basic operation we will need later. No braces so far, right? <clears throat> Next operation, and here braces will come into help, is about merging. Uh, let's suppose that uh, we have a uh, few, uh, okay, I visualize it in three columns, but let's suppose it's the same, it's the same queue of different events. And I want to calculate whether at any moment of time we have at least one event. Uh, available, not, not available, listed, listed. So merge, by margin, I mean that we, instead of having multiple parallel occurring events, we want to have uh, information whether uh, it's busy or, or free, free to play. 
So first step here would be to replace of uh, to start thinking about start and age and uh, and ages instead of uh, continuous event. So let's uh, let's suppose that in our code we replace uh, diapason like ranges. We are uh, replacing ranges with par of end and start time. It it would look like that. So uh, on my visualization, green line is a start line from any events we had, and red line is a ending line for also for any of events we are going to match. And now braces come into help. Uh, if we are suppose that uh, our starting age is actually opening brace and ending age is actually closing bra brace and also replacing this with uh, plus one minus one we can go after sorting of them we are going one by one and detect when we are reaching zero uh, sum of zero and when we are reaching some positive number unlike to string and braces balance check we definitely will not go uh, to negative values, but here we will be able to track where we we reach at like end of merged event. So here, uh, when reaching sum of zero, we are just uh, remembering this uh, format first part of merged event and going to the next one only from next positive number. With this approach, we will we are able to to merge multiple appointments which may be occurring parallel, and also when it may be. Oh, I, I I'll show you how uh, how it looked initially. Uh, yeah, so how it looks initially. Uh, actually, we should get uh, first merged part from eight to. 10, 30, and second from 11 to 12 and 30. Here it is. And when it also might be uh, in help, what if we are having more strict rule, say, for example, if we are allowed to schedule in parallel, uh, think about blood transfusion when there are 10 beds for blood transfusion. So there might be up to 10 patients uh, be treated in parallel, but no more. So with this, with this basic approach on merging and using different thresho threshold for when to start and end this merged event, we could calculate where at least 10 of uh, multiple and simultaneous occurrences happens at the same time or not. I hope it clear enough, but we, we might uh, re return back to it at the end and speak it again. <clears throat> Another operation which might be, uh, might be in help and also is related to braces is about inversion. Say we, we are having uh, this part uh, of calendar of some doctor, and this is actual appointments they have. And we want to know ranges when this doctor is free, free for business, free for new appointment. So how about inverting ranges? Uh, first of all, we definitely need to know a global start and global end point because uh, we cannot say that uh, our doctor is available from midnight uh, to 8.11 or 8.00 and from 12.30 uh, till the midnight because it, it's too hard. It's too harsh uh, for our doctor. First of all, we are again replacing switching from ranges to start and end point. Then we add uh, global I here I put uh, seven seven as a global start point and uh, three pm as a global endpoint, and we are also switching types of our edges, uh, just like they they were. We are switching their colors, 
And then later we do exactly the same. We are replacing them. We are thinking about them like plus one, minus one by checking the type. And we are just moving from first to the last. And when reaching non-zero value, we are starting new range. And when reaching zero, we are ending current range and remember it. So this way, we are able to invert ranges on some global, uh, in some global limits between 7 and 3 p.m. Uh, if to combine everything that I have uh, already described, we can reach the hardest part uh, we are actually implemented in our application. When we have uh, three different operations, three different uh, appointment types, and we need to schedule appointments of different lengths of different types one by one. On this example, uh, we have availability zone for first type only for these four hours and need to fit here one hour appointment of first type. Then we need to put two hour appointment somewhere in this column and back to back side by side, we need to put three hour appointment in the third column. Uh, first of all, uh, just like I described it in fitting section, let's uh, switch from placing event to, to placing start point. We are just shrinking every range in every column on appropriate appointment length. Uh, first will be shrinked by one hour, second uh, ranges in second column will, will become smaller by two hour, and a uh, big block in third column will be shrinked by three hours. As you see, first block in second column goes away because it was too small for our for our need. Then uh, we are doing something that we did not uh, look it into before. Now we need to switch every, uh, to move, to shift uh, ranges in every column to the sum of previous appointments. So first will go, will stay at place. Uh, second one will go one hour in the past. And second, uh, third one will go one plus two hours to the past. With this shifting, we are switching of thinking to place one by one different appointments of uh, starting from unknown points to placing uh, just single one. So uh, first one, what does it mean for us? The place when all three columns has a colored area, it's actually this from 11 to 12, is the only range when we can start our first appointment to put first appointment of one hour, then to put a second appointment of two hours length, and the last will be third one. And now we are, instead of visualizing and thinking about uh, color rectangles, we are just replacing them again with, time, uh, with times of start and end. I just collapsed them because uh, having them in three columns would not be that helpful. So there are two <laughs> opening braces because uh, coming from different columns from first and third one, we have a start, start point uh, for the same time. And after calculating, after going from first one to last one, we are again collecting our, accumulating our sum by adding or subtracting one. And only when reaching a uh, value of three, because we need to put three different appointment types. We are assuming that this is our availability or result area. Like here, it was just two of them. Here we are reaching a sum of, of three and we are starting to recording where this part ends and reaching this part, we are just ending uh, calculating current range and there will be no other ranges because my example is quite small and there are just a few areas available. What does it mean? This is actual a result when we can put our first appointment. And now when we are picking any time of this range, we are 
can we, we can track back it like uh, say we may start from 11 and 10 minutes first appointment which will end at 12 and 10 then we are starting second from 12 and 10 till the uh, 2 and 10 and finally we will add a third appointment of two hour length uh, maybe speaking about it is not that easy so uh, I just going to fill it this step of 15 minutes, but it's just just for convenience because we can start uh, first appointment anywhere in the range of from 11 till 12, uh, 12 30 actually. It just does not fit uh, my monitor. Sorry. So this is all I wanted to check uh, uh, and to. To, dis to discuss, to define. Uh, just want to summarize that uh, switching from thinking about event to just starting point is really helpful as a first step. Also, uh, placing and aligning in different appointments is also helpful when we want to schedule one by one. And finally, brace check really helps here. Uh, just want to highlight that it's not the turbulence from what I I'm showing I, I was showing, uh, but definitely we need to do a uh, sorting because uh, when say when having uh, for example this one which is converted to start and end points uh, after just converting after just map think about array map uh, we will get them in different order so we need to ensure that they will come from earliest one to latest one. And also if we have two or more edges or points for the same time, then we first calculate or first pro will process our opening braces and then closing braces. Because if we, if our sorting is not, is not stable in this particular, meaning we might have into some algorithmic issues. So that's all I want to say. Now it's time for questions. Thank you, Evgen. Uh, guys, maybe someone has any questions, please unmute and ask. Yeah, we have actually one question, Vadim, please. Uh, yep. Uh, so I have a question. Uh, what if we have uh, an event, for example, for three days, and uh, during these three days, uh, user want to add uh, one more event, like during this event, and uh, if uh, an event starts uh, in a previous day, for example, how to calculate that uh, we are available or not available? Mm -hmm. In this case, we just need to think about uh, or to process not in the context of day, then we would have uh, like timestamp, timestamp with data and all will be the same, uh, except probably you will need to know uh, what are the appointments to to retrieve from database, which may, may be a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Like you need not probably not just single event of three days length, you need also to other parallel events to figure out uh, maybe there are too many existing events or the same um, asset or something. So yeah, I thought about uh, creating uh, three instances for each day, but with uh, the same uh, foreign key, for example. It makes sense. It makes sense. Uh, however, if you will process only one day at time, you may mm -hmm. uh, you may you may get as a result that you can fit your desired appointment starting from here, but actually uh, it would interact, intersect uh, or overlap with next day appointment. So mm -hmm. it's better to operate without slicing two days, I think, mm -hmm. in general case. Okay, thank you. 